Hello love bugs and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, I'm Sarah and I help teach people how to find inner happiness through fitness and spirituality. And today, we're gonna talk about the secrets of the divine masculine. I've been doing heavy research into the divine feminine, the divine masculine energies, polarity, how they work with each other, how they can work against each other. And I'll tell you guys what, I am totally consumed with this information. And I just finished reading The Way of the Superior Man by David Dita, which is pretty much where my inspiration came from to film this video right here. Now, you might think it's a little odd that I'm doing a video on the divine masculine as I am, in fact, a woman. But the thing is, is that we all, every single human being, has a divine feminine and a divine masculine. The thing is, is that the majority of people, I think it's somewhere around 90 or 95%, have a much heavier core that is aligned with either the feminine or the masculine. And this isn't necessarily gender specific. It doesn't mean that, that every female's core is a divine feminine and every male's core is a divine masculine, although that tends to be the majority of people. And a lot of times we can tend to pretty much flow, flow, <laughs> back and forth between the two. Now, I wanna play a little game real quick before we get into the video, and I want you to think, do you think you fall closer to the divine masculine at your core or to the divine feminine? Let me know in the comments below. We're just gonna say feminine and masculine, okay? That's just how we're gonna do this video because I'm probably gonna say it a lot. So the feminine's main priority is the flow and the love and relationships while the masculine energy's priority is their mission in life that leads to ultimate freedom. Now, it's no secret that men and women are biologically different. However, with the feminist movement and the way that women have come into the workforce, stepped up, own businesses, own companies, take charge of the finances and their relationships, I mean, shit. Women even run countries. But because of that, the majority of women have really gotten away from their core feminine and have very much stepped into their masculine energies. And I would say that that has happened to me over most of my life as well. And so right now I'm learning on kind of how to step back and fall back into my feminine core energy, which is 100% certainly where I fall. And what happens is if you're a core masculine living in your feminine or you're a core feminine living in your masculine, you tend to be very misaligned with your fulfillment in life, what makes you happy, and it can cause a lot of just unhappiness in life. Now, the divine feminine and divine masculine share the ultimate goal. However, it's an extremely different journey on how they get to that ultimate goal of love and of freedom. The masculine's mission is always going to be more of a priority to the masculine than relationships, love, their woman, and that's just nature. Now that being said, that doesn't mean they don't want love and relationships and a, a, a female or a feminine companion to go through their life with. Just as if, you know, the woman doesn't, it's not like we don't have missions and we don't have a, a, a purpose to fulfill in life, but at our core, it's just not the number one priority as much as love and relationships and relaxing into our flow is. And in reality, as David explains in this book, the masculine's mission actually serves both people in the relationship. Think of it kind of as filling one's cup up before they're able to flow and fill other people's cups up. Or another example would be, think about how when you're on an airplane and they're going through before you take off all of the safety procedures and precautions and things like that, and they always say, hey, if we go down, put on your own mask before you put on others because in that way, you're able to help more people than if you're worrying about 
putting a mask on other people and you're running out of oxygen. On top of that, if a masculine isn't concentrating on fulfilling their mission and their ultimate happiness, then they're not actually showing up as their most authentic selves in the rest of their lives, in their relationships, in their families, even in their friendships. The masculine must live their purpose to be able to be fulfilled so that they can live their ultimate truth and be able to show up. <sighs> My freaking camera died, even though she said she was full, but she was lying, so. <laughs> anyway, where were we? Oh, so the truly interesting thing about this book that really caught my attention and really aligns with what my biggest like truest inner beliefs is is that our missions and things that fulfill us change as we go through life like what you wanted when you were five most likely not what you want when you're 25 not the same thing you want when you're 55 like we change we evolve hopefully and those things change too. So I also had a lunch break when my when my battery was charging. So if I seem a little more energized, I am. <laughs> it's also hot as hell out here. It's been so freaking humid the past two weeks. I digress. As a masculine and also as a feminine, we go through cycles or layers of fulfillment as we go through our lives. Once something fulfilled you back in the day pr probably doesn't anymore there's a good chance that something you did a, a while ago you loved and you really enjoyed and then like over time you kind of just didn't really enjoy it anymore or, or things change or priorities change an example for that for me would be I was a competitive gymnast and like I was a pretty badass one too and I loved it I spent <laughs> three hours four days a week at practice i spent the weekends at competitions plus obviously going to school and then one time i got injured i think i was in seventh grade and i'd been doing it you know since i was like five and i was like yeah i don't want to do gymnastics anymore i loved it like my love for the sport didn't change but i didn't have a life and i was getting to the age i was what 12 13 like, I wanted to have a life. I want to hang out with friends. I wanted to like do things. And so I quit. And uh, I think that a lot of people, and I talked about this in my last video, think that once they choose to do something, like that's it. You're not allowed to change your mind. Screw that. So basically, as you go through these different layers of purposes and fulfillment, you kind of like check it off. And then you go to the next one and then you check it off. This is not a check. Check it off. And then you go to the next one because you completed that layer. I don't know why he's saying it that way. Layer of purpose. <laughs> you know, even with my career path, I believe I went over this in another video, but you know, I went to school for journalism. I didn't do journalism. And then I was acting for a while and then I sold cars and then I was the general manager of a gym and now I'm in real estate. And guess what? Now, I'm circling back to acting because I didn't fulfill that layer. Because I, it's, I, it's not complete. It's not complete. So um, more on that to come in the future, but I'm very excited. So the biggest thing that I really took away from this book that, you know, as a woman was a bit hard to swallow was the fact that the man's priority, the masculine's priority is their journey, is their mission. That's what's going to give them fulfillment. Not me, not that chick. <laughs> Can we add to it? Hell yeah. And it goes kind of on the flip side too, which what David spoke about in the video is that, you know, sometimes you'll hear from, you know, the, the masculine in the relationship saying to the feminine, well, you know, why do you care so much about this? You care way more than me. You know, stop focusing all your attention on the relationship and blah, blah, blah. When in reality, that's the feminine biology. That's who the feminine is at her core. So as I'm studying this stuff, it's realizing that not only do we need to understand who we are at our core, whether we are 
feminine or a masculine, but we also need to understand our counterpart and how they operate because it's that polarity that will bring us the most satisfaction and fulfillment in our friendships, in our relationships, in, in anything, in any type of human freaking interaction. Now, I will say, and I feel obligated to bring this up because while I very much enjoyed this book, it was very much geared towards the masculine, the man, whatever. There were two things in the book that kind of offended me. <laughs> so, and it might not offend everyone, but to me, a little offensive. Now I understand it's a guy's book, it was geared towards guys, there are plenty of women that read it, this book's been around for over 20 years. But I feel like if I don't talk about these two things real quick, I won't be filming an authentic video and book review. So the first thing is that David says the feminine does not speak what she means. That essentially her words mean nothing because the feminine is controlled by her emotions. While I agree in the sense that yes, the feminine is very, very swayed and controlled by emotions, myself included. I go through 20 moods a day, every day. It's very exhausting. I think to say that women don't know how to communicate clearly and speak out for what they want is kind of bullshit. I feel that the feminine or a woman that can't communicate effectively is underdeveloped and immature. Now, the second thing I felt was very offensive, this one more, was how casually he spoke about how it's just normal for the masculine or the man to have mistresses. And I'm not talking about, you know, dating around when you're single, whatever. I'm talking about a coupled up man in a relationship committed to a woman in a marriage and they have a mistress. He spoke about that in addition to pornography, strip clubs, all that kind of stuff as being just so normal and so accepted. And I just don't agree with that. He even talked about lusting after the man's 18 year old babysitter. Look, men by nature are more visual creatures and back in the day when humans were like, you know, new on earth, their job was to procreate. And so biologically it makes sense that back in the caveman days, yeah, they'd want to impregnate as many women as possible because the whole point was to procreate on earth. That being said, I feel that men in modern culture today that are controlled so deeply by women or the feminine energy and their desire for women are unrefined, unhealed, and also immature. While I believe it's completely normal and natural for the masculine to be attracted to other women, other feminine energies, it is also very barbaric and immature to consistently lust after them to the point of being emotionally disloyal. So overall, really enjoyed the book. Definitely geared towards men or the masculine, whoever the masculine is in the relationship. There's always going to be a feminine and a masculine in any relationship, whether it is heterosexual, homosexual, all shades in between, there's always going to be one in the other. And the more polarity they have, the more masculine and the more feminine, the more it's going to have longevity and, and work out as long as those two people do communicate or, and are educated on this kind of information. I think this is so important and I'm going to continue sharing information about the divine feminine and the divine masculine on this channel because I find it so fascinating. I would absolutely love to hear your thoughts on this video. So please let me know in the comments below and also, were you right? Did you know? Are you a feminine core? Are you a masculine core? Are you not sure? And if you're not sure, ask me a question in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer your question. I love you guys so much and I can't wait to share this journey with you as I evolve and fall back and get back into the groove of my feminine core energy. Thanks for spending time with me today and don't forget, be limitlessly yourself.